Hey friends, very exciting today. What we are going to cover is basically point cloud vectorization. So vectorization, the process to go from some kind of modality, raster data, through the point cloud to a vector entity or vector set of entities, which is the default go-to in a geospatial information system and a lot of application. So there is a missing link that you can find on the internet where no one is giving you the tools or the way to do that and I intend here to solve part of the pipeline. We will create some lighter data from an open data portal source and we will extract a neighborhood from this little area. And from there, we will want to detect the houses, extract the footprint of these houses and then create some kind of level of detail model for each of the individual house. And that is a very strong point toward more analysis down the line. So that is what we're going to do. Without further ado, let's dive onto what I prepared, what is the tutorial plan for today. As you can see, we are going to go through five main phases. The first one being environment preparations, where we will want to make sure that you are equipped from scratch to be able to attack this challenge. Then we'll move on to uh, data preparation, the phase two. This is also something that is uh, light, so it will be a light progression. And at the end of that, normally you should have the data that is ready to go through the first set of experiment, which is the phase three. We do not want to scale and automate at this stage. We just want to take one example, one building, and try experiments to see if all the, the pipeline works on that. So that is what we're going to do. This is where the bulk of the work is. And then after that, we'll basically um, re-engineer a bit the code to automate and scale so that you drag and drop your point cloud and you get the CT modeling of the area that you are considering. That's the idea. And of course, at the end, we'll go a bit onto visualization and analysis. Um, there is some experiments that I do also on, on, on rasterization, so uh, vector uh, from raster data, but that is uh, in the article that you can find that. Okay, so if you're ready, we can get started right away. So the first thing we want to do is actually uh, set up a virtual environment with Python. So you go onto anaconda.org and you download anaconda and you take the one from your distribution. Once that's downloaded, you install it and you have a separate way to use that, either you use the um, GUI or you use the command line. So let's start uh, with the GUI. Once you install that, you should arrive to something like this, which has a base environment. So what you need to do is actually create a new environment. For me, I have vectorization, but you can create the one of your own in which we will install the various libraries. I can also show you another way to do that, which is Anaconda uh, prompt, right? So you can execute that as an administrator and you arrive here. So you are in the Anaconda prompt of Anaconda. And basically what you just have to do here is conda and list uh, to check out the environment that you have installed already. And you see that you have a lot of them and the one that I will be using is vectorization. But if you do not have that, you just make conda and uh, conda create and for the name. And here the name could be uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube vec, and then you give the Python version that you want to use. So for example, 3.10 or 3.9 is okay. And this will uh, create your environment. It may ask you some time to agree with stuff. You just press Y and enter and we'll follow the installation. Now it should be installed. So if I make conda env list, now I have YouTube vec, all right? So what I can do is conda activate and I type the name of my uh, environment okay and this is it this is I'm in the environment so from there I can install the various libraries that we want to have so first um, we will install three base library with pip install and the libraries that we we'll want are numpy for computation um, pandas matplotlib to plot and at this stage it's already good so let's install these uh, fundamental libraries and we are good all the base library are installed now we can move on to installing um, 3d libraries pip install open 3d for manipulating 3d data and open 3d is installed so now i call try to install laspy with um, lazrs and plus uh, and we are good to go. So we have the base library, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. We have two 3D libraries, Open3D and NASPy for the point clouds. And now let's load a bunch of uh, geospatial libraries. So pip install um, Rasta.io for manipulating raster data, um, GeoPandas, 
an extension of pandas for geospatial data as well shapely to to handle the 2d vector data and also alpha shape which is a small library to compute alpha shapes now we are almost ready so we have our environment isolated created with a bunch of libraries onto this environment and the last stage would be to use an IDE and here we could uh, use JupyterLab right JupyterLab so pip install JupyterLab and I press enter and that means that it will fetch JupyterLab for us IDE install it and we'll be able to code from there now very good the installation is, is done so we're ready to code to code we can just launch Jupyter space lab and that will open us um, a window of JupyterLab. There, there is one thing though, is um, that you are launching JupyterLab from the folder in which you are cited into your uh, little uh, uh, terminal. So here you will see that I will be in a local folder, which is not really what I want to have. Uh, instead, I want to change the folder to where my code will be written. And I usually have always the same structure, so code data results, which means that I need to change that. So I will close my JupyterLab uh, window. I will go back my terminal you see that my server is running and I will close it by pressing Control C now I will change to where my code is so first uh, if you need to change the drive you just need to press um, the letter and from there I will fetch my little uh, path with change uh, change folder so CD and where my code is all right I press enter and everything is fine and from there I just launch Jupyter lab and here we are good to go Now, when you're here, you can go into uh, your specific file that I created for you, right? So you can download it and put it here from the GitHub or the link that is just down below, and you should arrive here, okay? So the first stage that we have to do is actually load the libraries, and the first stage is loading the base library. So import numpy as np, import um, matplotlib directly pyplot I will use so pyplot as plt and import pandas as pe and then same thing for the libraries the 3d libraries so here it's import open 3d as both 3d and for the geospatial libraries which are here and also um, I will make sure to import from this library some specific function uh, from origin resampling shapes and polygon so that we are ready to go and once this is done you just press uh, mash enter so shift enter and no module name matplotlib which is normal I press that and I rerun it and everything is imported and you can see my version of LastPy which is 2.5.1 okay now phase 2 data Preparation, that's where we are going to curate the data, prepare it, so profile it, and then uh, pre-process it so that we can then directly take it from there and run the follow-up follow actions, okay? So the data that I chose is from a region that I really love in Canada, uh, which is Vancouver. And basically, you can go to the Vancouver portal here, and I selected one tile from here, okay? And you can do the same, so taking a tile and downloading it, and you will have a LAZ file, or you can go to my uh, Google Drive folder, uh, where here, okay, I did not drop yet the file, but you will find the neighborhood file uh, directly here, okay? So, uh, some stuff about this, if I go into the information, why do I choose that? Is that we already have classification given to us with unclassify, two is the ground, and six is the building, so we have to, to remember that. Now, let's load the data. So to do that, we will use LastPy, okay? And uh, the function read, and we will pass where our data is. So I express everything relatively with uh, there's two points to say go one back data and the name of my file is neighborhoods.laz. Okay, and that will load our file into the LAS variable. Now from that, we could explore the classification field by getting the last of classification and printing the unique values of that. And then finally, uh, printing whatever we have in our um, in our header and finally I like to print out the coordinate system projection system and once I put everything there we can have an output where we see that we have classes ranging from 1 to 7 okay we have XYZ and a lot of uh, features and the projection is in EPSG 26 910 which is I think uh, UTM zone 10 central meridian 1 to 3 west okay that's important if you want to, to then fuse data sets together 
That's it for the part of curating the data. Now, still within this phase two, uh, we'll do some kind of pre-processing. And basically here, what we want to do is to create a mask, okay, uh, which we'll call point mask, which will retain only uh, the points where the classification from the last file is equal to six, so which is building. And then we'll transform that into a NumPy array with NumPy vStack. We'll stack vertically the various um, points from that, so the x, last dot x last dot y and last dot z so the x y and z except we'll pass the mask uh, to that to filter out only the point with the mask so point mask and i take that i put it here and yeah right and that's uh, pretty much it i forgot to put another double bracket around that that will be good to go. And once we have this numpy array, I put a T because it's transport, it will be X, Y, and Z instead of X, Y, and Z. Okay. Uh, we will create an open 3D geometry of type point cloud here, and we will pass to this new geometry, which is called PCD underscore O3D, the points with a vector 3D vector function from open 3D, that take the transpose of the transpose, right? And uh, from there we can make sure that we will work there after with local coordinates because they are too big and we may have problems to handle that. So to do just that, we can trans translate uh, our point cloud. But before translating, we get the center with this little function and then we translate um, our point cloud. So pcd 3translate minus pcd center. And the final operation to do is actually to visualize the re results with this little line or 3 visualization .pro geometry, And I press enter and you see that they have a window that pops up that shows the little buildings that are extracted using the classification field. So pretty nice. Already at this stage, we see that we have a lot of noise points. It's not perfect classification, but it's good enough. And that will be the base for the follow up um, steps where we want to derive buildings from that. Right. OK, so let me close this now. Let's do the same thing uh, and isolate only the ground points. So basically, I'm just retaking everything. I'm not translating again, right? So that's what I'm doing. Point mask, uh, transpose, and I take a ground point and I visualize that. Let's see what it makes. That's only the ground point. You may have a hint why we're doing that at this stage. Um, if you do not, please trust me, you will see just down below why we still need ground points in our experiments, okay? Oof. So that's very cool. We uh, went through this data pre-processing phase and a last stage that I like to do is to bit profile more what we have and compute the nearest neighbor distance between points. And I want to average the nearest neighbor for each point around its neighborhood. And I can do that with this common line where I see that I have around 11 centimeter between points. Okay. Now it's time for phase three, which is the single unit experiment. And as you can see from this nice uh, chart, we're going to go through first an unsupervised segmentation phase, okay? So trying to identify the clusters within the buildings for having each instance of its own. And um, then I will retain from that just one single house and I will pass through all the unit experiments. So first extracting a building footprint, a 2D building footprint, extracting a bit of uh, cementing and attribute information from that, that can be very useful. And then going from a 2D to a 3D vector, that will be the base to create uh, the model with both the meshes and the faces. And then we post-process that and export. Okay, so that's really what I'm going to show you. So the unsupervised segmentation. You have many ways to approach this and uh, I will show you one way to do that, but I encourage you to extend what you learn here with other ways. Um, one way would be to use k-means. The problem is that you do not have outlier filtered out, so you need to be sure exactly how many houses you have. So it's not fully automatic. You can define this parameter automatically, but it's not as accurate. The second way would be, for example, to use SAMS, so the segment anything model. That will work, but you need to go through a phase of projection that that's a bit heavy on the computation side. So I will show you a third way using dbscan because um, you can basically work in an Euclidean space, which we have clear delimitations. And on top, you will filter out what is noise and only retain relevant clusters. And for that, we need two parameters. Um, I will set that very high to make sure to retain uh, a sufficient let's say number of points. And then after I want to compute labels and max label. So my label will basically take PCD cluster DB scan. We take the epsilon, the minimum cluster of points and the max label. We just want to know how many uh, clusters we have. Okay. And finally, let's color each of our uh, cluster differently. So for that, we use matplotlib basically, 
and we define what are the colors. So we take the tab 20 discrete color range and each um, labels that is below zero because the noise will be classified label minus one will color it black and all the rest will take it from there, right? And finally, what is missing is the visualization that we have here. So now let's activate and wow, you can see that we have something super nice. We have the houses nicely detected with uh, various colors um, and that would be very, very interesting and I think a strong base to use for individual modeling. So even if this two looks like they have the same color, they're actually in two different uh, segments. And here again, okay. Oof, so we have 31 cluster. That's the stage. And now let's go on to a single experiment. So here we will select the segment to be considered, which is the step five. And to select this segment, we will just take one for now. And we know that we'll, be, we'll have that as a parameter within a loop. Um, and to, to, to get the segment, basically, you have a function which is select by index from Open3D. And we will make a check where we need to have the labels which is equal to the selector. So the labels, okay? And that's what I do. And I just take the first because it returns to me um, an MP array with more than one element. I just want the, the, the first one. And that's it, that's my segment. And from there, what we do is actually draw the geometry of the segment. So let's check out, yes, we have the house. If I were to change uh, the selection, let's see if it works. You can see that we have another house. So this is very nice. Let's keep the first one, uh, which is interesting because we have chimneys, we have three layers of roofs. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice little sample, right? So now that's finished, we go on to the step six, which is extracting the outline, the building footprint of the selection. To do that, we will uh, first extract the X and Y coordinate of our point clouds. And uh, you know how to do that. We take the point 2D and we will filter out based on the index. So we take all the points and we just take X and Y. Okay, the two is excluded always when you use NP array, segments.point. We need to make sure to go through um, the initial open 3D object to an uh, MP array. That's why I do that, because after that, for the shape, with alpha shape, we need to pass an MP array. Okay, and to use the alpha shape of the building vector, we just use the library that we imported, we use the function, we pass the 2D points, and we give a parameter of alpha. The lower um, uh, you will be, the, the more little detail you will have, the higher you are, the more you will be close to a convex hull, so having the full envelope without any concavities. That's what we also would like to have. And to print it, here with um, Shapely, you can just type the name of your variable at the end in the cell, and if you press enter, normally the magic happens, you have your shapes that happens here, okay? Now, let's create some kind of way to store this information and we will use GeoPandas to do that. And we use a building underscore GDF for GeoData Frame. And uh, to create a GeoData Frame, basically, you just call the function GeoData Frame, you pass the geometry, which will be building vector, and the CRS. And if I were to print uh, the first line here, so I will do building underscore GDF dot head, and press enter, and you see that we have a geometry which is a polygon, which is stored in kind of a data frame, but it's a geo data frame entity. Very cool at this stage. Um, we already accomplished a lot, but it's not finished. And uh, it may be interesting to push a bit more and go on to the second phase, which is computing semantic and attributes step seven. Now, uh, we want to have the height, right, of the house as a relative measure. And uh, let me show you something first um, by computing the altitude. So what do you think is wrong if I do that? I compute the altitude by taking uh, only the Z value of all my points. I add my uh, translation of Z to get to the real coordinates of Z, so the altitude, right? And after that, I will take the maximum of my little segment point cloud and the minimum, and that will be my height. So what is wrong with that? I will tell you just right away. We are dealing with imperfect data, which means that it's real data, and you may not have within the building actually points that are close to the ground, close to the reality where you, you, your house is standing. You may have uh, a shift where actually if you were to use that, you may have a house that is two meter instead of 10, for example. So that is something that we do not want to have, but you, you may see that in a moment. So that's where, if you connect the dots, I will actually leverage what we did at the beginning, so extracting the ground points. And we have to define the ground level in the local area. So what I do is the following. I will uh, define a query point first that will be based on the center of my segment, okay? So I want to take the center of my segment. And from that, I want to actually 
drop the Z because I don't want the center of my segment there, but I want it at the minimal value. Okay, so for that, my query point will get at the minimal value of my segment, which is get min bound and the Z. Now, I will take my um, ground points, okay, and I will construct a KD tree with the following line, PCD uh, tree um, equal to O3D geometry KD tree flan ground points. So that will construct my KD tree. And from there, I will uh, do a kind nearest neighbor search where I will retain the indexes um, of, my, of, of my points for each of, of my points, okay? So I pass the query point and I take 200, 100, whichever fits best for you. Let's put 200 for now, okay? And uh, I will retain all my indexes. And now what I just need to do is to create a sample of points that will retain that. So I will take my ground points and I will select my index and I will pass my index list, okay? And I will paint that and visualize it. So uh, yeah, let's do that for now. So I will delete that and let's do the visualization to see what we have. And as you can see, my house was standing there. You can see in gray all the points that will be selected uh, by my little query. And the idea now is to use that to compute the minimum value of my building. Okay, so the point that are close to my to to to, to my building. Uh, this is the only data point that we have that could hint where our building is, okay, that, has, that is relevant enough. So that we will use that to define the lowest bound and the highest bound of my building will use the, the point of the segment, okay? So the last step is to define the ground zero and we take the sample and we get the center and we take the Z value of all these points. And finally, for the height, we do a uh, max bound minus this ground zero, right? Uh, of the segment minus the ground zero. And if we were to check the difference, we could do that. Hop. So again, this is the one that we have previously, and this is the new one, um, which is a shift of minus 12 centimeters. So in this case, we, we were actually uh, pretty close, but that's important to have that. <sighs> that was a big step. Now let's move on to computing some parameters. So basically here, it would be nice to have uh, a lot of parameters. And because we have the alpha shape, we are able to compute some interesting parameters. So the first uh, parameter that we would like to, to stick with is, um, let's say, the um, label information. Okay, so we'll stack all into a geodata frame. So my building GDF. Now I will add a colon called ID. And here I want it to keep my selector, which is one for now, okay, to make sure that we have always that. Now we want the height. So I just do the same thing. And here I put height. And my height is basically uh, segment man my minus ground zero, but we could do that directly by taking sample get center instead of ground zero. Okay. And we can have an area. For getting the area, we can use the alpha shape. So here, area, we take my alpha shape, which was building vector, and dot area. That's that simple. Same thing, we could have the perimeter, which is an information that could be useful. Perimeter. Uh, and then let's take out the local central width of our building and also the shift. Okay, translation by keeping uh, that and the point number. And to do that, we can have the length of the segment points uh, just like this. Okay, and now if we were to print the first line of our data frame, how would this look like? So now I have everything. If I print out, Perimeter is wrong. Yes, it's normal because it's length that we need to have. So I press enter and you see that I have my geometry, ID, height, area, perimeter, and so on. So this way, we already have a very ways to structure the information that we have after processing through the steps. Now, I want to show you some way to get some extra attributes, right? So I pass, um, I will extract points 1D along the Z-axis and I want to print the local minima and the local maxima. Right? And then after, I want to plot the histogram because we saw that we had three roofs. So maybe we, we could leverage that somehow, right? And um, extract some kind of very interesting way to, after we could model the roof layers, for example. So let's see that just right away. We'll do this line. And as you can see, if I do the histogram along the Z axis, we have the three roofs that are really popping out through this chart, which means that we could use some breakpoints and identify the breaks to try and segment our point cloud even more. So that is a very good perspective to have. Now, let's move on to step eight, which is going from 2D to 3D. So basically here, it's very simple. We'll compute uh, vertices, 
by using the list operator, building vector extra records, and then we'll compute a polygon 2D. And here I show you a way to do that uh, with the list utility. So we still have to compute a 3D vector, but here we are actually using a list comprehension that will append the point plus a zero value, and uh, that's it, pretty much. Right, and at the end, we could use Open3D to visualize. So we went from the Shapely to Open3D, and very interestingly, you have here your shape. So this is super cool. Now, uh, we have to do that for the top layer. So this is exactly the same process, okay? I will call that an extrusion. So I create a line set geometry, I create my vector 3D utility and 2DE, and I draw my geometry. And after I will also plot my vertices so that you see the difference between both. So these are my two lines pretty nicely uh, plotted. And here that's all the vertices in blue and in red that we have that define these polygons. Okay, so that's one way to go uh, around it. You can see that instead of putting a zero uh, and yeah, uh, it's rating over the line set, I put the height, so it's from zero to the height, so that is correct. Now, we could do that in a, a more efficient manner in this step nine, which is actually by uh, using a numpy approach. So what do I do is first, I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to define three variables, A, B, and C. A being the coordinates of my alpha shape, okay? B is basically taking my alpha shape and uh, dropping the, and P is basically just creating a single array that is the same size as A, but filled with the center of my sample, so the ground points. And C, that's the same thing, but I take that plus the height, okay? To make sure that we really put in a local frame of reference um, our two uh, vertices. And now what I do is actually hash stack, so horizontal stacking with NumPy, A plus B, and A plus C for the up point cloud. So every time the extra record, so only 2D plus uh, C and B, okay? And finally, I will create an open 3D object and fill the points with exactly what I have, so the concatenation of both, okay? And along the axis zero, and that will create one single entity, which is the following. Nice, nice, nice. We are now ready to compute the alpha shape of the base point, and we could use open 3D to do that. Here I pass the line of code. What is interesting is that I use the function create from point cloud alpha shape and I put a very high alpha because let's say if we are building up to 20 meter, I still want to create some kind of triangle and I want to paint it as well. And I want to show my point cloud, my mesh and also uh, the segment in it. Okay, so the vertices, the mesh and the segment. And beautiful, we have our model that comes out of it and you see the vertices and if I zoom in, you can see that we have our point cloud uh, which is enclosed into our mesh. Okay, we have a lot of uh, warning, but that's to be expected uh, because you have invalid Tetra Mesh within our creation. Beautiful. Now it's time to go on to um, the final stage of this single building, which is step 11, post-processing operation and export. The first thing that is before exporting, we want to reposition the mesh. So you can use the translate function of Open3D and pass the center that we uh, saved just before. Now for the mesh, Basically, we will write our mesh and then export also the shape file. So for the mesh, uh, you can just do that. Write triangle mesh and you go into the result folder, how sample mesh write as key false. So it will be binary and I put a bunch of other comments in, in it. And then uh, for the shape file, very easy, building GDF to file and you export your shape file. And I press enter and everything is now exported. So here is my folder. As you can see, we have our shapefile with all its dependencies and our PLY. So let's open Cloud Compare, okay? And load the input data that we had and on top the sample house and the shapefile to see exactly what is the results of our little experiments. So now let me go to the initial data and you can see here the point cloud that I use neighborhood. I'm just dragging and dropping this point cloud and making sure to apply a little translation, that's okay. And I will reapply that result, uh, our sample, and I just drag and drop it here. And we have X, Y, Z, I apply, I take the previous input. And as you can see, we have our house really nicely positioned here, right? Where it makes sense and it sticks nicely to the ground as well. So that's a massive success at this stage. And the last thing that we wanted to check is to load the shapefile 
and you see that we have the shape file it's normal it's in a local frame of reference because i didn't want it to truncate uh, the precision of our shape file so I, I stick to have it in local but you have the translation so it's easy after to apply the translation upon it beautiful so let's now automate and move on to phase four which is 3d automation and scaling and for that we are first creating a loop where we will select the segment okay so to select the segment we do what we had before cd or 3d select by index np where label equal to selector so for cell in range the max label plus one that's what we do i take the la line that we had before that is not needed then we compute the building footprint okay so for that we you remember we take the 2d points and the building vector with alpha shape then we compute the height of the segment so this is with the query point and uh, using the sample ground points and ground zero and then we are going to um, compute the various attributes entries we actually could drop that because i don't think it's used uh, but let's keep it for now and after that let's add that to uh, geometries entries but for that we need to initialize some kind of uh, master geopanda data frame that's not a common practice but i still wanted to to show you that it's possible to initialize a geo data frame and for that you do uh, geopanda data frame and you pass all the, the the column names right and at the end you just say which geometry uh, column you are going to use and the crs okay and that will initialize an empty geo data frame nice so that means that now we could use that to concatenate every time this single building geo data frame to our master geo buildings geo data frame to have something um, which is updated great finally we can compute the vertices and the 3d geometry and for that nothing simpler than just doing that one little thing is that it would be good to paint um, each instance with a specific function that take random colors and i will define that just here this kind of function um, it's an optional utility let's say and i will import random and define rgb as random color and return a float color which will be interesting to colorize then uh, my mesh okay and that's pretty much it we did here everything that we wanted except um except except exporting so for some reason here it's not yeah so that i can delete and here i think we are good to go we have a right triangle mesh in the result house underscore something string selection ply mesh right ascii false compress so let me i think i have already some houses there created so let me drop all of that um and drop all of that as well and be ready so now that i made my automation i'll just press enter and it will loop this is normal uh, that we have a lot of outputs so maybe what we could do is also um, let's say reduce the output wave of open 3d so else it's very heavy so we just add this set verbalizity level to just have the error and not the warning so i very good so uh, let's check out our building geo data frame so if i do that and we have all our polygons which is very cool right with all the information every time so before going to step five we could export also the uh, shape file so let me do that by just doing exactly as before and now if we look at our folder with all the houses and what i will do is take all of them and drop them in cloud compare yes and beautiful you can see that we have all of our building that appears and instantiated right so i could select each of them independently this is beautiful and wonderful at the same time. I will also load uh, my shape file, which is there. And it was not this one, it's uh, the full neighborhood shape file. And you can see that we have all of it as well, right? So, this is wonderful. Um, you could see that we would need to have some kind of post process, for example, to merge this little. Um, here there's little entities with the big entity and here as well with boolean operation you do not have that in open 3d but in other libraries um, or you could just filter out using here the number of points uh, whenever you have like a low number of points like let me show you the building in gdf like here translation and so on but if i were to put head five it would be better um, or just uh, yeah head five 
yeah, like for example, here you have 335 points, whereas the other one have a big number. So this means that we could filter out here at this stage, right? We are at the end of this tutorial. That was a big one, but, but I think it will provide a massive value uh, here if you are into the scope of going to export vectorized entities, whether 2D or 3D, as we saw. If you like complete guide and articles, you can dive onto the Medium article. If you prefer tutorials, please uh, subscribe. Uh, that means a lot to me and uh, share it with the world. That would be also something super nice to help as much people as possible. If you want an entire online course, there it is at the Geodata Academy. And I was really happy to have you on to this journey and let's see each other in the next video tutorial. Bye bye.